Hi everyone, my name is Igor and I work in DataArt as an e-commerce solutions architect. Today I'm going to review the current state of e-commerce architecture and share the experience of how to build e-commerce project in a cost-efficient manner. And I, I saw this presentation from the chart showing e-commerce sales dynamics since 2007. 15 years ago I, I developed my first e-commerce project and at the time having an online store wasn't mainstream. Now everything has changed and uh, it's a very rare case when a business doesn't sell online. And as you see uh, from the chart, dynamics is positive and the sales from e-commerce are really growing. Uh, to review the current uh, situation in e-commerce architecture, it's better to look back in 2007 and uh, remember how the websites were developed at that time. The leading uh, e-commerce platform was Magento. It was a fully monolithic application with front-end and back-end coupled together in, a one, in one bundle. And uh, since the time, a lot of things changed. The biggest changes uh, started when the headless approach was introduced. And the idea is that you can detach your front-end from back-end and uh, develop storefronts separate for using some modern JavaScript technologies. It gave a lot of... Uh, abilities for uh, businesses to update and refresh the storefront experience without doing significant changes on the back end. And uh, the next level is a composable commerce approach. And it's kind of an evolution of headless. And now the idea is that uh, you not, not only detach the storefront like as a, as a head, but you also split your backend APIs on some parts on the services and you can use those services separately. You can uh, buy the services and mix best of breed services for your application. And if we speak about uh, uh, those, those services that you can uh, use, uh, it was to review this chiefmartage.com chief, chief website, uh, which really shows the variety of different services that's already created. It's more than five. Uh, uh, 5,000 services, uh, and uh, it's really interesting to like to find the service that fits your needs in particular area. Let's say you're interested in PIM system, or you want uh, 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 search engine, or something uh, something related to promotions. It's a really rare case when you will not be able to find something on the market that fits your, your needs. Uh, the exception could be only some uh, legal uh, limitations of your company that doesn't allow you to use uh, something pre-built. But it's the general idea of whole composable commerce uh, approach is that you can take something that is already created previously and use it in your projects. And definitely each business is unique and some fraction of the business cannot be taken from some existing services. And that's the main idea, so that when you do the e-commerce transformation, you focus on your unique parts of your business. And uh, some common uh, things will be like reused. Let's speak about the whole digital commerce ecosystem uh, on high level, and then we'll focus on, uh, on some parts. The core of each e-commerce uh, platform is e-commerce engine. Here I see it's like commerce tools and big commerce is probably one of the brightest representatives right now, which will feed uh, medium, medium or large projects. Uh, the storefront is uh, now consisting of two parts: is digital experience platforms, which allow you to do some personalization, A/B testing, uh, orchestration of the of different API services. And, and uh, it followed by site generator framework like Next.js or Gatsby or Next. Uh, the site gener generator framework is technically responsible for building pages based on the data from received from digital experience platform and some other backend systems. The, the headless CMS is really essential part of any uh, e-commerce ecosystem because usually e-commerce platform do not provide really great uh, content management experience. It is the reason why headless CMS is usually uh, like a part of each and every uh, e-commerce solution nowadays. E-commerce platform usually uh, connected to different third-party platforms like tax solutions, payment gateways, delivery platform, or promotion engines, PIM systems, and so on. 
if you speak about search, it's usually connected not only to the e-commerce platform, but also to the site generator framework, because you consume the data on the storefront. And to the right, right side, you see order management area, which is really important for cases when you are not very happy with uh, out-of-the-box capabilities of order management, which comes with your e-commerce platform uh, admin panel, and you want to, to have something more complex, something more flexible. In this case, uh, you can find some pre-built order management platforms that really can help you to save both cost and money. Let's focus on uh, those uh, building blocks and many elements of e-commerce ecosystem. So e-commerce platform uh, is, uh, as I mentioned, it's probably the core of core service of the e-commerce ecosystem. And we can think about three groups of projects. First is like low to medium complexity project where you have some quite common sales process and quite a standard catalog, let's say, let's say you sell some electronics or some something similar to it. And your sales process is that you select a product, uh, do some uh, personalization or customization, uh, select bundles, and sell it. In this case, uh, Big Commerce and, or Shopify could be a really good case because out of the box it provides a lot of features, and uh, you also can leverage from the marketplace. Both Big Commerce and Shopify are really famous for zero marketplaces where you can find a lot of tools uh, and uh, get it for quite uh, affordable cost. If you have something more complex, with maybe a complex catalog, or you have some unique sales process. Uh, some price uh, management uh, tools which are, cannot be uh, easily integrated in, in big commerce uh, pricing model. Or maybe you have some specific integrations that uh, cannot be easily connected with big commerce. Uh, you can take a look at commerce tool, which is kind of a good solution for uh, bigger projects, projects of bigger complexity, I would say. Uh, and uh, allow a lot of uh, API, internal APIs being extended by using Lambda functions, support a lot of uh, different integration and extension possibilities. And actually provide just more flexibility on the product catalog and uh, all the items that can be customized. Let's say uh, you can set up a lot of uh, additional rules for uh, for your promotion system, which is uh, more functional than, let's say, big commerce. But commerce tools has uh, additional downsides. The, their admin panel is not that great as, let's say, the one from big commerce. So commerce tools could be a good option if you have PIM system and you don't manage the catalog inside of commerce tools and uh, your order management is also implemented by some separate services because out of the box, uh, commerce tools uh, or order management, it's also not that great. And uh, it's quite a rare case when you will uh, get to this point, but still for high complexity projects, uh, it's probably sometimes worse to go uh, with from scratch development. However, you still, you still can consider reusing of some services, let's say from commerce tools, where you can buy additional service, uh, let's say for cart or for checkout, and still save the money. But technically some projects are really so complex, so bespoke that it doesn't make too much sense to uh, use some existing solutions just because you will not take a lot, a lot of them. Headless CMS, as I mentioned, it's one of the best ways nowadays to manage the content. And uh, it's probably one of the main interfaces where your content editors will use to create uh, additional pages describing some collections, home pages, uh, additional pages that are con connected to generic information, writing articles, and so on. And previously, uh, some legacy platforms like uh, Drupal or WordPress was really popular, and uh, they also can work in headless way. So that if you have, uh, 
if you have engineers who are really uh, good uh, working on the, those platforms, it's still a possibility to use legacy platforms uh, for content management with new composable architecture. However, at the same time, uh, new, completely new products appeared like Sanity or Contentful, uh, which really changed the way how you work with uh, content. And they have a lot of additional, additional benefits. However, they also have a limitation. They are connected, they are, uh, work in cloud, so you cannot self-host it. And in terms of the option of self-hosting, you can consider something like Strapi or Squidex, who are, provide similar uh, features as Sanity and Contentful, but also provide self-hosting capability. Uh, the interesting area of consideration is the way how your content data is configured in the CMS. If we compare Sanity and Contentful, we can understand that uh, Sanity uh, recommends more uh, development friend friendly approach uh, where you can uh, configure your entities using just code JSON files. It gives a lot of possibilities to uh, to control the structures and implement kind of uh, more efficient uh, efficient management of the entities. Let's say you can easily extend one entity uh, and inherit uh, like one entity of the other one, and because it's just a JSON file, so you can import it, export it, and so on. Uh, the other advantage of this approach is that you can uh, be sure that the, your content your content uh, model will not be broken by anyone non-technical, as it's technically possible in Contentful, if you give them enough permissions. And Contentful, uh, comparing to Sanity, allows you to uh, control all the structure within browser, using just mouse, without any development, uh, any development efforts. And as I mentioned, it has both pros and cons. My personal per preference is Sanity, just because I like that uh, content structure is kind of responsibility of engineers uh, who can uh, set up it in a more efficient way. And uh, Contentful will be probably a good option for uh, technically skilled uh, teams who st still don't want to work with code, but want to control the content structure using just, just browser. If we, if, we, if we continue comparing those uh, platforms, one uh, big advantage of Sanity is that Sanity Admin Panel can be embedded in your admin tool. It is provided as a NPM package, so you can just uh, import it and use in your single page application without, uh, without limitations. Unfortunately, Contentful cannot do it, and Contentful, uh, like, Contentful provides kind of uh, not very modern way of extensibility, because if you need to develop an application, it's a separate application that can be embedded in uh, in an iframe. And Sanity just a single page application, so built on React, so you can you you can make a lot of changes, and it's kind of more development friendly. When you when you consider using a headless CMS, uh, you always compare the price. And there are some techniques how you can reduce spendings on CMS. One of those is to use st static page generation instead of server side rendering, which means when you have some traffic spikes, let's say on the Black Friday, uh, and your uh, customers visit some pages, if those pages are statically generated, uh, it means on each uh, opening of the page, your customers will not uh, invoke uh, CMS APIs it will just get pre-rendered content. And it's really useful because uh, you can save a lot in those peak, peak times. And the same goes for images caching, because if you pre-cache your images, it will not be fetched from, uh, from headless CMS, and it will be just uh, opened from your CDN. So with those two techniques, you can reduce uh, the spendings on your CMS uh, often like significantly because it's also possible that s some spikes of traffic appear and you should be ready for it. But unfortunately, it will not work if, in case of personalization or doing some A-B testing. So you should understand the cases when you can uh, apply those techniques. 
Talking about the order management system, uh, the main problem is that uh, out of the box, order management uh, uh, coming with uh, e-commerce core engine are not very extendable or even not very user friendly. Uh, and uh, the good example, it's probably commerce tools, which is really great product. However, their uh, out of the box order management capabilities is not that great. And the interface also is not that straightforward. So usually customers would prefer to use some third party order management system to manage the orders. And it is the case uh, for other, other e-commerce projects, because uh, even if your out of the box order management uh, system is good, it's probably not that ex extendable. So you cannot, let's say, build some uh, workflows, automated workflows inside of e-commerce platform. And a good representative of uh, the order management systems is Fluent Commerce, which allow you to uh, set up additional rules uh, inside of uh, inside of Fluent, Fluent Commerce, and uh, with no code approach, set up additional additional operations, doing do some automation and so on. So it's really uh, important to to ensure that all your uh, custom workflows are possible in order management system as well as check that your order management system uh, has a connector with your e-commerce system. Otherwise you'll, otherwise, you'll have to do a lot of uh, integration work and uh, some APIs of the e-commerce platforms are really not ready to do for very deep integration. Let's say uh, we experienced issues with big commerce when you need to make changes in the order uh, with the API, you have to do the calculation of the taxes manually and it's really helpful when your connector between order management system and uh, e-commerce platform do it for you. The search engines are essential part of uh, each and every e-commerce uh, architecture right now. And previously, people used something like uh, Elasticsearch or partially seen, uh, which are really good for bespoke solutions. But nowadays, there is something better, something more tailored for commerce needs like Algola and Const or constructor.io. And one of the advantages of those platforms is that you can uh, experience really minimal setup time. So you can use it uh, immediately after you subscribe. And it, it provides additional features, like let's say visual merchandising, which, uh, which allow you to uh, control the way how the order, how the products are displayed in the PLP page. Uh, you can drag and drop, you can, uh, control the positions of the products and so on. A recommendation services, uh, while it's not a primary feature of search engine, but it also comes in a package with search capabilities, let's say for Algolia and constructor.io. Uh, and uh, it's uh, important that it's already pre-configured, it works well. And uh, if you compare the those services with, let's say, Elasticsearch, you definitely can get the same functionality with Elasticsearch. However, you will spend more time and uh, require uh, additional expertise on this. So I would really recommend considering uh, pre-built uh, pre services like Algola and Contactor.io when you consider your search engine and recommendation tool. Now let's speak about the front end. And uh, as I mentioned, with uh, Hellas approach, frontend was a, a main focus. And now the interesting area is DXP platforms, which unlock personalization, A-B testing, and, and backend orchestration on their side. And, uh, but they are not responsible for building actually the pages. And uh, that's where website frameworks come to play. They're responsible, they give you the structured code so that when you hire additional developers and they had previously experience with Next.js or Gatsby or Next, they won't be surprised by some solutions that were applied in your business. And when you build pages with these website frameworks, uh, it's the other area of uh, wise uh, budget, uh, budget spending is to use UI components that are already pre-built they are specialized for uh, some e-commerce needs and allow you to speed up the development and keep the code consistent. Actually, it's not like you can uh, just use it. You can definitely style it 
and uh, develop additional components. But it could be a really good start for your uh, for your e-commerce storefront, and you can save a lot of time. The deployment options nowadays uh, also uh, provide three like three groups of. Uh, first one is specialized services uh, where you where you get not only uh, the hosting but also but also edge function, functions, A/B testing, testing, ability to work with forms, additional analytics, and actually top-notch performance uh, because the, those services are tuned to work with websites. It's like Netlify, Versal, Gatsby Cloud, or Cloudflare. In the same time, you can use general cloud services and uh, create something uh, based on the capabilities it provides. Uh, it's not very common nowadays because it really doesn't make sense to reinvent the wheel when something like Netlify or uh, Versal can be used. However, there are also some cases when the functionalities of Netlify or Gatsby Cloud Versal is not enough uh, to cover the needs of your business. So you get additional flexibility. And from time to time, you also can save money, uh, but it definitely requires additional expertise and additional, additional time to do this setup. If your company requires uh, some special flexibility or uh, has additional security and legal requirements, uh, you can consider on-premises infrastructure. And however, it's uh, more complex, more less cost-efficient option because you have to you have to buy the infrastructure, you, you have to maintain the infrastructure, you have to support the scaling of the infrastructure and so on. But again, for some cases, it could be the only option, unfortunately. Right. We, we reviewed uh, probably our main blocks of uh, e-commerce architecture. However, there is uh, other uh, common case when you need to add uh, some commerce capabilities to your brand website. Let's say you have you had a website built on I don't know, any technology uh, and you want to experiment on commerce. You don't want to invest a lot. However, you want to uh, review whether this commerce approach will, will work for you. There are several services like Stripe Checkout and Snipcart to just allow you to connect with your uh, website with add their uh, simple piece of JavaScript and uh, this uh, this feature will the commerce feature will be available on the product pages. Uh, the difference between Stripe checkout and Snipcart is so the Stripe is connected to the Stripe payments, so you are a bit limited with this. However, if you select the Snipcart, it supports six. Uh, payment gateways and you can integrate your custom uh, additional custom gateways. Both support taxes management, uh, have admin panels, support coupons, and so on. And if you have some uh, on-time on and recur recurring uh, purchases mix, it's also supported. So you can evaluate the whole idea of uh, commerce without investing too much. And then if you are happy with this solution, you can probably expand the, the setup and migrate to uh, like some e-commerce engine or add order management system and so on. So it could be a really good start with uh, uh, limited budget and uh, short timeline in case you have a brand website. Thank you for your time. I'm open to the questions. Have a good day.